my name is Ola, and I teach here at SIS, and I will uh, take just five minutes of your time to, uh, to tell you a little bit why I came up with the idea of the conference, and then it will my speech will follow by uh, the little introduction by uh, Eva and Richard. Well, for the last year, I've been a principal organizer of this conference, as you know, being bombarded by my emails. The conference on impact of gender discourses to which I'm pleased you responded uh, uh, to our invitation. I wish to welcome you to this two days conference at SIS, the confer uh, conference that was made possible thanks to generous support of Oxford Noble Foundation and the program on Mod uh, and, and its program on modern, uh, modern Poland and the UCL grant challenges. I've been researching the impacts of gender discourse and women's studies for 20 years now, and the hope that one day, and I had a hope that one day, um, the change in our everyday gender awareness will make our world a much fairer place, without madmen's, for example. But the end of the 1990s, I thought that it takes about 10, maybe 20 years, that would, and things would be clearer. Clearer um, binary thinking would decrease, decrease, uh, decrease by visibility of LGBTQ communities would, would increase, anti-abortion anti law would be a thing of the past, gender gaps would vanish, sexist behavior would be covered with the anathema of unbearable shame. After all, it was a time, end of 1990s, when gender studies in Poland were thriving. I dreamt, to quote Adrian Rich, about the common language of tolerance and openness and the proliferation of genders to the point that no one would ever believe in simplistic binaries anymore. Yet, still the presence of binary gendered world would, could, could not be denied. A cursory look into contemporary cultural practices will suffice to expose gender workings. Pink for the baby girl and blue for the boy, Superman and Batman for the boy, and the frozen for the girl, for the daughter, to put it in a laughable way. But there are hundreds, hundreds of examples that prove my dream unrealistic. Sad example. Some people deny existence of gender and assume the binary as fully natural. Some announce the wars of gender, the wars on gender. Other create the terms genderism, you all know that, as signifying some sort of sect aimed against humanity. Some claim that gender is a dangerous third sex thing and that gender can be changed overnight. Gender is accused of sexualization of ch children. They claim that, in, uh, that it is gender as the source of the whole hashtag me too hoo ha. We all heard this accusation of gender. We all thought them to be ridiculous. All these, of course, are false, dubious, and ridiculous assumptions of gender studies and the very concept of the gender at work. But all this actually shows that in 2018, Today, we are in need in this, of this general, inclusive debate of gender discourse. The debate that hopefully creates some indi indication as how to again start dreaming about the world, world without binary and oppress oppressive categories. The very idea of the conference came to me at the beginning of the, uh, of the last year, and it seems straight away as a huge project, almost impossible to sustain thematically. Still, I thought that this general over overview would give the project the notion of importance of gender studies as a way of thinking about life in general, not as a sort of method methodology of particular fields. I wanted to show that once we wake up the gender sensitivity, we just, we just cannot put it on and off as we would with a pair of glasses of spectacles. The perspective will always stay. So here we are at the conference that focuses on gender studies in various fields, literature, art, society, politics, film, and social media, the present and the past. 
I was extremely lucky that my colleagues Richard and uh, Richard Moore and Eva Majerska supported the project. I wish to thank them very much for all their support and go goodwill. We together worked on the shape of the conference and devoted our time to make it happen. Together, we will gather your articles and create the publications out of our talks and debates d uh, during those two days. The publication we will, which we hope will contribute to increase those gender awareness. We will have two days of talking and these talks I be believe are always important. Please forgive me a little anecdote. During, during these meetings, like during the meetings like this, I always think about one anecdote about the National Organization of Women in the U.S. at the beginning of 1970s. After one meeting when National Organization of Women create riots during the governmental gathering discussing the side effect of taking the contraception pills in the early 1970s, the director of FBI, G. Edgar Hoover, sent the directive to conduct sufficient material to determine any possi possible threat now represent, represented. The infl infiltrators or the informants uh, were writing back and saying nothing. They just talk. They are just talking. They don't do anything dangerous. <laughs> but as one of the women remembering this time in the 1970s, and I refer here to the film from 19, 2014, uh, uh, the title, She's Beautiful When She's Angry, she says, the irony is that they didn't do anything dangerous by doing something dangerous, because telling the truth and talking is very revolutionary. And this is what I wish us today, to talk, and in the long run, to do something revolutionary that will change the way we think about the future. Last but not least, I need to mention something to which I wish to dedicate this conference in general, the 100th anniversary of Polish women's right to vote. The emanci emancipation of women is of course the emancipation of all society. I've been the first, uh, it's been the first step towards the deconstruction of binary thinking the centenary of women's right to vote is at the, at the same time connected to the field of uh, the fight for reproduction, reproduction rights. The black protests coincide with the centenary in a wonderful way because there are two real emancipators of women, the vote and the birth control. We are celebrate celebrating the centenary of the former, but we, still, we are still in need to fight for the latter. The island gave us a wonderful example during the recent referendum to show that society understand a woman's right to control her body. And I'm hopeful, I am sure, Poland will follow. I will finish here. Again, thank you very, very much for coming. And thanks in advance for your paper, for your discussion, for taking part. Uh, in the discussion for your contribution and for the submission of your articles. All the information about the publishing will be included in the emails I will send you after the conference. <laughs> I will need to thank the administration of SIS for helping to organize the conference and I also uh, want to thank and draw your attention to the three of my conference assistants. Sophia, who is not here, uh, Alexandra and Aud who have been invaluable and will contribute to, so, uh, to, do, to, to be so for the duration of our conference. If you have any trouble, any question, please ask them. Now, I would like to invite Eva and uh, uh, later on Richard to join me with this welcoming session. Thank you. Mm -hmm.